Well, hey there. Managed to do another week of GigTube news. It's GigTube Weekly for July 2nd, 2021. Or actually, I guess technically July 3rd, right? I'm going to pull up some news articles here. I am going to address the two videos that I released earlier this week at the end of this video. So if you want to see that, you can skip ahead. There will be timestamps in the description below. Okay, first up, Tesla is planning to release their own rideshare app. Of course, it's associated with Tesla cars. It's going to allow Tesla owners to make their own uh, money off of rideshare, I guess, using just Tesla. This is going to kind of tie into my series next week, which is about the electrification of the gig economy. I'm going to do about three videos on it. Two or, I got one already pre-recorded that I did weeks ago, and then I have two more that I'm going to record at a later date. So Tesla is planning to do a rideshare app. If you watched one of their big events, this has been in their, you know, kind of like uh, Apple has their big announcement events about watches and phones and things like that. Tesla does the same thing. And they've been talking about this for about two years now. Originally, the idea was for it to be completely self-driving or you could hail a car and it would come to you and then you would drive it. But it looks like what they're going to do is they're going to hit the middle area right now and just do ride sharing. Now, this is significant for two reasons. Uber has tried to do self-driving ride share. Lyft has tried it. A number of other companies have tried it. And if there is a company that would be able to pull this off, I think it would be Tesla. They're going to be able to collect a lot of information on the cars as people are driving them and use that to fine tune and tweak the autonomous driving. And so when it comes to ride hailing and things like that, they'll be able to add that information in based on, okay, there's a a lot of people who go from here to there and so they can they can use that data they're smart they know how to do it and um, yeah I, th I think they'll do pretty good on that so Tesla rideshare links to all of these articles will be in the description below along with the timestamps CEO of Uber Eats Dara Kasra Shahi was out delivering food for Uber Eats he tweeted a couple times. Uh, of course, people jumped on and said he's not earning as much as he says he's earning. And this is where that discrepancy comes in, right? Of what do we count as earnings? Do we count the total online time or do we count active time? Because I can be online with multiple apps. Let's say I'm only doing food delivery and... I'm on Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash. I could stay online on Uber for f two hours, not get a good, not get any good offers, and continue to deliver for DoorDash actively for that two hours. So what are my earnings on Uber Eats? Zero for two hours, right? So there's kind of a debate on whether or not it's calculated. People said he made less than minimum wage. Uh, this was a Business Insider article linked below, as well as his tweets that he sent out. And it's it's been kind of disproved that he made $30 an hour or something like that, $31 an hour. It's sort of been disproved. It's a lot of people say, no, that's really how we should be calculating earnings. Everyone calculates their earnings differently. For many people, it's how many hours are you out on the road. If you're out for eight hours, how much money are you making? Are you making $20 an hour? Right? That would be $160 for eight hours of work. But 
the actual online time where you're actually delivering could be a third of that. So it's debatable, right? It's pretty debatable. And especially if you're multi-apping, you can't count online time. I keep scratching my nose because my nose itches. So there's no wives tale that says you're coming into money when your nose itches. So itch away, right? <clears throat> so, you know, what's the, what's the deal with that? Um, I don't know. It's San Francisco. You go out during lunch rush or breakfast or whatever, dinner rush in San Francisco, you're going to get deliveries. Each, each deliveries. Each market is completely different. It would be interesting to know if he took every order that was offered to him. We don't have those details. It would be interesting to know um, whether this was an undercover type thing or whether Uber only sent him specific orders right? Yeah. I'm sure they can do that. I'm sure they have the technology to determine, oh, this is Dara. Let's send him orders that pay this much per hour. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to get into that debate. I, I know that it's possible. Whether or not they did it, who knows? Who knows if they manipulated it? DoorDash. DoorDash News. DoorDash News. Um, according to Restaurant Business Online, DoorDash is reporting that most customers would prefer to order through first-party channels, meaning instead of using DoorDash, they would rather go to the restaurant's website or app or call them on the phone instead of using DoorDash. I think we need to keep this in mind because that will probably change the way we see orders coming in, right? Right now, um, there's a, a feature called... I'm itching my nose again. There's a feature called DoorDash Drive, right? And restaurants can request pickups for people. And I've gotten those before. So what happens, and I'll use Chipotle as an example, you, show, you get an order for Chipotle. It's whatever it is. And when you get there, it says from DoorDash, it says, we don't know what the contents of this order are because the pickup was the delivery was requested by the merchant. And so it would not surprise me if DoorDash shifts the way they do these things. Um, maybe they I don't know if they charge less of a percentage if restaurants are actually in their app versus if the restaurants do the work themselves and use DoorDash Drive. I don't know 100% sure, but that needs to be information that you need to keep up in your head when it comes to doing deliveries because that is going to change earnings, tips, all kinds of things. There's plenty of evidence that for these drive uh, these drive orders that restaurants keep some of the tip, if not all of the tip. So be aware of that. Uber and Lyfts can be electrified now, Uber and Lyfts. That's a really bad article um, or, or title. Well, it's it's a motherboard article, so that explains it. Um, so both of those platforms can be electrified, but drivers aren't so sure. Absolutely, we're not so sure because depending on where you are, um, electrifying the entire fleet requiring drivers to have electric vehicles, that's not going to work out. Where I live, is there electric vehicle charging? Yes, there is. But it's not um, It's not as available as it would need to be in order for me to use an electric vehicle on a regular basis. Now, could I do it for casual ride share, casual food delivery? Sure. But um, I don't I, I don't see this as something that is going to be a net positive right now for drivers. Again, I'm going to address this a little bit more in upcoming videos. So let's move on to the next thing, which is there are municipalities in the United States that are capping delivery fees for 
food delivery. So Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash. So San Francisco uh, approved a permanent cap for delivery fees for third-party apps. So what does this mean, right? Well, they're just going to add a different fee on. Instead of a delivery fee, it's going to be a service fee or a convenience fee, right? When you order tickets online from somewhere, um, usually there's a convenience fee involved, right? So those are going to be other things. Uh, we're already seeing right now, if you order food in California, uh, there's an additional fee that DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub are charging in order to get money in for the Prop 22, where they have to provide a, a minimum amount of earnings. So it's like a 350 fee on Grubhub or something like that in California. So you put an order in, there's a delivery fee, there's a service fee, and then there's like a driver fee or something like that. And that's to supplement people who don't make a certain amount per hour. Now, it, this is a luxury. Food delivery is a luxury. And I know in some instances, it's not a luxury. It could be a necessity, especially for people who are homebound. And I get that. But for the vast majority of people who order food, it's a luxury. And so do I have a problem with them charging higher fees? No. In fact, I think most of the cost should be on the customer rather than the merchant. However, I also think the driver's should be getting paid more and we shouldn't be as reliant on tips. There's a local food delivery um, company in my area that they guarantee an $8 minimum on every single order. So they are passing the cost of this convenience. I don't know if they're passing it on the customer. I haven't looked into it too deeply. I'm going to be talking with them to find out like, how do they do this? Is it just a higher fee? Do they charge the restaurants more? But it's a minimum of $8. So based on, depending on the restaurant and things like that, that, that could be pretty, pretty, uh, you know, pretty decent. If every single one of your orders was $8 and you did three orders in an hour, you're making $24 an hour. That's not bad. Okay. That's not too bad. And that's without having to go through and decline orders and all those kinds of things. You make $24 an hour if you do three deliveries an hour. Uh, that's pretty good. I think most most drivers would take that. If they knew they could consistently make $8 per, per delivery, they'd take it. So, good thing, bad thing, I don't know. Capping the, capping the delivery fee, they're just going to add more fees. It's like when you go to buy a new car, right? There's a document fee, there's a detailing fee, there's this fee... That, they throw all these fees in so they can make more money on the car. So there you go. Um, Uber has been having a few bugs lately. They've been charging drivers for trips. You know, these apps are very, very complicated. And I can see where there could be logic issues with these apps. Um, apparently one was $2.20 for a 16-minute trip, and the other one was $50 for a single ride. The driver got charged $50 to take someone somewhere. Now, both the people were later in, uh, reimbursed, but they chose to quit the platform because of the experience, or at least one of them did. There's more details in the article in the description, but this is, um, this is bound to happen. These apps are bloated. They have too much in them and it's hard to keep track of code changes. There are different algorithms based on the market that you're in. There are different features based on the market that you're in. They're constantly rolling out new changes to test in certain markets. Yeah, I, I can see this happening. I can see this happening. Very complex code. And I mean, yeah, it needs to be fixed. And hopefully it doesn't happen again. Um, the average dasher, in case you didn't know, 
and this will tie into my next topic. The average dasher dashes less than four hours a week in a Q1 earnings call for DoorDash. Um, it was revealed that 75% of the people on the platform are students or have a part-time or full-time job and that of those of that 75 percent they average less than four hours per person on the platform delivering food so this is very interesting because most of the people on this platform that are using doordash i'd probably say even uber eats too because those people are probably using uber eats they just do it casually they don't do this as a full-time thing. Those those of you out there who are doing this full-time, who are making a living from it, you are in the minority. You're the exception and not the rule. And so, yeah, there's a lot of different things that come from that. Uh, I would encourage you to read this earnings call to see what kind of plans that they have. Again, link in the description. Check it out below. So I made a couple of videos this week about para one of them was a call to support to ask them about the app and the other one included steve from para just kind of as a as a cautionary tale to people so here's the deal i got a number of responses i got a lot of positive feedback i appreciate it I got a lot of polite and respectful feedback with people disagreeing with what I did, and I appreciate it. I'm going to respond to a couple of comments that came up. Number one, you don't dash. Um, actually, William brought this up. Um, there will be a link to his channel. He respectfully brought it up and said, hey, you know, um, you said in a previous video that you're stopping food delivery, that you're barely doing it. That is true. I barely do it. I did go out this morning for about half an hour, but I am barely doing it because the insurance situation in New York is such that you can't get insurance. So I wanted to address that and say, he's right. I barely do it. Uh, someone else, you know, made a real nasty comment about it. Um, but again, most people who use DoorDash do it less than four hours a week. So I am not in the minority. I'm in the majority of people. One person said the entire PARA community is upset at me. That's not true. And geez, I didn't know that that person spoke for PARA. Uh, there were a lot of don't poke the bear comments. I, I mean, I understand that, that there are a lot of people out there who are concerned about not having access to the app. But, you know, hey, I gave them, I gave them my account information. If they wanted to deactivate me, which they didn't, um, they could have done it right after I made the call, right? But I was able to go out and see and do a delivery this morning. So it worked. I haven't been deactivated, even though I called support and said, I'm using this app. They have it on record now that I'm using the app. I wasn't deactivated. Some people said, hey, you're just doing this for clicks. Well, Okay, yeah, I mean, I have a YouTube channel. I'd like to get more subscribers. I'd like to get views on my videos. Yeah, I'm doing it for clicks. And so is Tanner Markley. And so is Bentley Coop. And so is uh, Gig Mom. And so is, uh, I can't remember her name. She does the Instacart videos. Everyone who's on YouTube, when they make videos, yes, they're doing it for clicks. But they're also doing it to inform, educate, and entertain. So it's kind of tied into it. So yes, I, I, I did it for clicks, but I also did it to show that you don't need to be afraid of what's going to happen if you use the Para app. Some people said it was fake. Um, look, folks, I put the number up there. I showed the phone that I was connected to DoorDash. Make the call yourself. Go ahead. Call support and ask them about PARA. No, actually, don't call support and ask them about PARA. But you could call the number and find out that the number that I called was DoorDash support. So there you go. 
Uh, Tanner Markley reacted to the video, which I thought was uh, very, very interesting. Uh, there is a gentleman who is like a dog with a bone. I, I use the, ge the word gentleman. However, he has been pretty rude. Um, there's a gentleman. His name is George. I think he goes by something else on YouTube. I might actually unblock him from my channel so that he can see this. Uh, because he is under the impression that uh, I would not mention this. So here is his email to me, which I'm going to read verbatim. Sorry, but since you blocked me from appearing on your channel, yes, I did. Here it is in writing, directly from DoorDash corporate office. It does violate the terms of service because they use unauthorized access. Oh, oh, by the way, this is all in caps. So they use unauthorized access and abuse of the DoorDash platform. Okay, okay. I bet you won't make a video showing this though, huh? Actually, it's, actually, it's this though, huh? Because there's no question mark or a comma. Uh, and so he forwarded a message. Uh, by the way, he he did not forward his entire message that he sent to DoorDash. But here's the DoorDash. Uh, so so this is the portion of the email that he sent to DoorDash. Can I please get clarification on this? Does the Para app violate the terms of service for DoorDash? I believe it would help if you could clarify this. So that's great English right there. But for some reason, when he's, you know, raging about me calling DoorDash, grammar goes out the window. So the response from Taylor Bennett, Global Head of Public Affairs. Hi, George. Thanks for reaching out. It's important for Dashers to know that Para app requires them to share their login credentials, which creates a security and safety risk for both Dashers and the DoorDash platform as elements of the Para app include unauthorized access to and abuse of the DoorDash platform, it, its use by Dashers can be grounds for deactivation. We know that when you sign up, Para says that. They say, look, this violates the terms of service. We know that. And if you look at the interview that I did with Steve and with David, they both said, that's why we tell you this. We tell you that using this app is a violation of the terms of service. So I responded to George and I said, uh, this is nothing new. We know this. Para tells you this when you sign up for tip transparency. This is a boilerplate answer. Maybe I'll give Taylor a call and see if he'll agree to be interviewed instead of giving a canned response. So then George responds again, because I don't know, he's... I don't know. This proves that your phone call to support just simply was not true. I have it in writing that it does, in fact, violate the terms of service for DoorDash instead of the video that says it does not. I never said that. What I said was I called support and they said it didn't. I have other videos on my channel that talk about how this violates the terms of service. It also proves that the para guys lie. They say it might be when in fact it is 100% against it, but hey, get it. Hey, I get it. You won't make a video about it because it will show that you are all liars. I've watched at least a dozen videos with the founder, uh, with Eric, who's the programmer, with Jimmy, with Steve, in every single one of them, they say, this is a violation of the terms of service. However, we don't think they're going to go after the Dashers. And if they're going to come after anyone, it would be us. So George, I made a video about it. Uh, next time, if you want to have civil discourse, I would be happy to do it. And with that, I would like to say I'm going to recommend a gig worker of the week. This is going to be a segment. If you want to be the gig worker of the week, hit me up below in the comments and we'll find a way to get in touch with each other and we can, I can share something with you. So uh, gig worker of the week. So the gig worker of the week is 
William Anderson. William respectfully reached out to me and said, hey, in a previous video, you said you were stopping dashing. And he kind of took issue with me calling DoorDash support. But again, he did it politely and he did it respectfully. And so I'm choosing him as the gig worker of the week. I know that he does DoorDash, but he also does Uber Eats. He's like Diamond or something like that on Uber Eats. He's got 2,092 lifetime deliveries, a 98% satisfaction rate, and he's been delivering since May 2019. So I'm giving you all this information because he provided it on his YouTube channel. Now, you don't have to have a YouTube channel in order to be the gig worker of the week. Maybe we'll do it through Instagram. You can tag me in an Instagram. So on Instagram, it's instagram.com slash rideupstate. Upload a picture of your driver profile and tag me in it and you might be next week's gig worker of the week hey um that's gonna do it for today i hope that i have addressed i think i addressed most of the major issues that everyone had with my two videos like i said i don't mind people disagreeing with me i don't mind being wrong but just speak politely and um we can have a discussion about it. That's it. Just be nice. Be nice, people. Until next time. My name's John from Ride Up State, reminding you that just because you're in a small market, it doesn't mean you need to settle for small profits. Bye.